All right, this is a video about real estate and in particular a hotel case. And I, the last thing I am trying to claim is that I am any kind of expert at either doing a financial analysis of a hotel, staying in a hotel, booking a hotel, nothing. But this little case that um, I, a student gave to me and then then we we kind of elaborated on is kind of a good general modeling case and a good general case about economic analysis so here's the what we'll eventually do is is we're going to look at a base case that has no economic analysis and in this case the We'll talk about the project life coverage ratio, the loan life coverage ratio, the DSCR, the loan to value ratio, which looks fantastic in this kind of base case. Then we'll do some economic analysis of the industry and look at surplus and supply and demand in Dubai first. Why not? There was a little bit of a study in Dubai that you can find on the internet and then we'll look at a particular case where there was there's a big projection in new uh, hotel rooms and we can simulate the, uh, the what happens if there's different levels of dem increases in demand in the market or less increases in demand and what happens if the initial occupancy we used in our supply and demand analysis was a little different and what happens if there's a little bit of a difference in the fixed and, and variable cost uh, proportion okay now the uh, again I'm practicing this for a little class I think I have a little mistake here but uh, here is this this was my I hope I, I, I uh, yes I hope I took everything out this man said, look at this shit. This, you call this a model, and he's right. I, even this one, I think I put the, the, the colors in. I should have taken them out. But this, what a, what a, okay. They wanted a loan of, of $129 million or something, or whatever it was. And then they, they uh, uh, have some stuff. They did put occupancy down here. They put some occupancy statistics. And then they had some revenues and some debt. And that's it. One page. And they were supposed to do something with this model to make it look fancy. Well, here was my real problem. The problem with this model is not the fanciness. And the kind of how many rooms they have and all this the problem with this model is that uh, well there were, there was one problem number one that the uh, uh, debt service coverage ratio if you look at the cash flow they call it they didn't even call it cash flow available they call it free cash flow to the equity uh, whatever the uh, uh, firm i guess and then they uh, uh, have this now if you look at the debt service that's 19 i guess the the uh debt service coverage here at least in the first couple of years was negative so they gave a model to the bank with a dscr of below one that should have been kind of the first question but my real problem is not making the model look fancy which we're going to do now i course had to change it a little around put the dates here so we can have a little bit of flexibility then put the capex then the hotel pricing assumptions then the operating cost assumptions and then they had some terminal value assumptions buried in there and then we can have some uh, bank financing assumptions control alt c let's get it colored again of course you know my new generic macros with the, the the ones and zero formatting and the extra column for the sum and uh, whatever okay and if you run this generic macros and it takes a little bit you know, it's a little bit slowly if it goes into a different sheet like that just reinitialize this but now we can show the ones and zeros maybe you don't like that color what the hell um, 
uh, and then so what we go through the operations that's where I started how many rooms you have what percentage of the year you in put some inflation in put some operating costs now the other thing they had which I think is so crucial is they didn't distinguish between fixed and variable cost two big problems with the model not the little the fact that it was a little crappy little model the big problem was no distinguishing between fixed and variable cost and if some of the costs are fixed well then when occupancy goes down you're really stuck if they're all variable you just fire everybody when they or lay them off whatever when they 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 uh, uh, when you have a, a downturn in occupancy then the cap rate we need to do some sensitivity analysis on okay and once we have this all of this then we can move to our uh, financing and I should have put that in a separate uh, kind of column and I took the little thing and we made the sources and uses of funds we put our summary sources and uses just like we do here and this time we have a debt balance that's flexible and we see the interest rate and then we move down to the revenues cash flow and expenditures so I'm going to put this revised little more so I haven't put it here yet and I'm going to put this in project finance uh, here, no, this one. Project finance, uh, real estate, and oh shit! Uh, project finance, real estate here, and we'll put it in hotel project finance. Excuse me for taking so long. Uh, okay. And here is the real major issue with this. Now, that, when this was, the person in the class was really kind of good. They said, look, I can go to this place called uh, uh, JLL, Jones Land LaSalle, which I love because they hired my son for money, didn't stay there, but uh, that was wonderful, whatever, that you don't care about that. Uh, they, here, this. Uh, uh, in you go to this Jones Land LaSalle website and they show this market and they show oh this is the number of supply in terms of the number of rooms this is the supply in the particular market we're looking at so I just copy that here all right and then they also say here's the occupancy rate and they say it's only 53% Okay, now if you say, okay, well, this was 2019 or 18, let's say it's 2018, um, and the, I'm going to say it's, two, excuse me, 2019, and the occupancy rate is 56%, well, then you can say, okay, if this was a supply, the implied demand must be only 56% of that. That's not that hard, is it? And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this one. Uh, uh, excuse me. This is. Uh, I'm going to make this one the 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 key year. Okay. I'm going to change this around a little bit. Okay. So if I, ah, ah, oh shit, uh, this 56% multiplied by the number of rooms. And then what I did is I said, okay, well, let's assume a little demand. And in the future, we'll just say, let's take this, this number. And we can just, uh, if we want, we can just grow that. Okay. Or we can get fancier. I reduced it as well. Okay. And, and then. Here, shift control R, and that's our demand in, in the market. Ooh, I hope you're not hearing all this banging around. Okay, and then we have the supply, and we have to make some assumptions after this. I use the little transpose function, and then after 2021, uh, we need some kind of assumptions about the supply, so I just made a little spinner box, and that way we can get the uh, occupancy and the effect of all of the 
increase in the market supply and all we had to do was go on the internet and find that and that is such a key element that to, to be able to not model one hotel you want to model the whole the whole market and you want to see what happens and the danger that scares the crap out of you about the uh, oversupply and then the, in this case because of the oversupply we have some some changes in the the, the uh the occupancy rate okay i'm just saying that didn't change it so here's our occupancy rate we have it going down by here this is a big number by 20 percent <sighs> now the question is if the occupancy rate goes down what happens to the to the uh, uh, uh price and if the occupancy goes down i think the price is going to go down because i think you're going to start to have people trying to price more and more down and down and down maybe not to the marginal cost which is the variable cost but you you're going to keep going down so how can we get that you know what i did then is to go to the i i they this uh, jones land and lasalle also had something here they had the for this is a dubai i wish you had this for every market okay they had some some uh, statistics and then we could just take these occupancy statistics and i hope you i wonder how many people actually use the read pdf to excel because all you have to do is copy this and put this into a, a new spreadsheet somewhere uh, and you you uh and then it doesn't go in properly it doesn't go well i don't say properly what the what the hell does that mean but it goes in a little bit differently and then you can open the read pdf to excel and notice i have these things pinned to my uh, computer and then you, you you if if you're having a problem you might want to auto open it uh, whatever whatever that thing says shift control a and this time you don't use the standard one you use this one and you don't break with the years you just click off of that and then it just comes and it gives you a nice little uh, uh, kind of table just to start with isn't that kind of cool okay whatever and then so what i did there i'm going to not even save this file don't say one in the heck because this is a new one and then I'm, well, let's go back to our, our hotel example, okay? And then we can take this, and this is, you don't have to be a fancy economist to kind of start doing a little bit of this. You can go, I went to this Dubai data. Now, the first thing I did was I said, let's graph some of these things so we can graph the, this ADR is average daily room rate. I even know that. PA, revenue PAR is daily average room rate times the occupancy. So we can start graphing anything we want. So we can kind of compare different things. Uh, I'm going to put it back to the ADR in without kind of any inflation. So what happened here is if you just look simply, the elasticity. The, a, the room rate changes when the occupancy changes, and it changes by more uh, uh, the, the, for each change in the occupancy rate, there's a bigger change in the, in the price. So we can graph this, and then if we do a simple regression, we kind of don't get anything. We could make a regression where we make a simple line and say that if we take the occupancy we we multiply that by 1200 and divide this but it isn't it better to do the percent change now i also i'm gonna kind of fix this you can also see if there's auto correlation in the data that's if you're a little bit fancier you can do this in terms of logs but i just did it simply i said okay let's take the percent change in occupancy and you know why don't we put the natural log and let's be a little fancy because that's another way to get that percent change okay well, i suppose we could do it like this this, this that's a continual change rather than a discrete change here's our okay here's our 
percent change in logs. And then we get an elasticity, which says that for each percent change in occupancy, this is just using the slope function, intercepts just about zero, which is good. For each change in occupancy, the, the, uh, the price changes 2.3 times, 2.38 times as much. Okay, officially uh, elasticity is the percent change in price divided by the, which is this one, by the percent change in quantity. Okay, and then so we have this number, and then we can, so that's the, this is the thing we really want. And we can then say, okay, we have a percent change in occupancy. Let's take that percent change in occupancy and put in the percent change in price. And suddenly that simple little kind of crapola model suddenly looks a little more interesting. And I'm not going through all, and we didn't, it didn't take a, a bunch of really high paid consultants or anything really fancy to do all of this. All we did is we went on the internet and found some supply data and demand data. And maybe you can get a really fancy study and you, you, the, you can argue with, people can argue with you at all about it and everything else. Now you could also put some different assumptions in about the starting price. And here's what I su suggested. It's kind of stupid, but I go on to Google and find the kind of rates and we can see if these rates are reasonable to, as a starting point. And then we can put a little factor in it. We throw a scenario analysis together, just like I'm always telling you to do, I hope. And we put that all in kind of one page. Let's color it quickly. And uh, I don't know why it's always going here. We can see what's the inputs and what's the, what are the, 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 the calculations. And then we can, now we, in this economic analysis page, I used a little lookup function and I said, okay, well, we have our little uh, economic analysis over here, our supply and demand data. And we got, we have some occupancy. Now this depends on what the kind of starting point occupancy is. And if somebody says, ah, the starting, that 56, that includes a bunch of little Egyptian hotels that I stay at. So let's, let's adjust it a little bit. And then so you can say, okay, let's adjust the starting point. And then you can say, ah, I disagree with the demand and disagree with the supply. But then you get this occupancy rate and percent change in demand. And then you just throw that into your scenarios. Okay. And then if you really were fancy about this, I suppose let's waste some more time with some coloring. Let's make this a red sheet or something. And we can then really see what kind of assumptions come from this one. And in fact, when you press control alt C, if you use this one, and I'm going to reverse the background to really highlight where it all comes from. Okay. Again, I, that, and then you can see, ah, it came from that sheet. Ah, here, the real change in the average daily room rate also came from that sheet. Okay, and then you can put some other assumptions in. And uh, uh, I don't know what this this kind of thing is, but the, the, we, we have a crazy occupancy and we could put a stress case in. That's a little too, let's make it uh, 40, 45. Okay, that's arbitrary. I think that was good that I just did that because our other assumptions aren't quite as arbitrary. Okay, and then after we, now, now we have a little more sophisticated model. So that little simple model now has some economic analysis behind it. And let's just talk about one more thing. Let's talk about the fixed and variable cost because our original model Okay, the, oh God, I'm sorry. The, the, so the original model here, I gotta do some editing, I think. Ah, oh, screw it, I'm not gonna do any editing. The, the, they assumed some, all, basically all the, the, the OPEX were 28%. That means they're all variable. That means if you start changing this uh, occupancy, all the cost will change. It's such a fundamental thing that there's some fixed cost and variable cost, and it's a lot more dangerous to have fixed cost than variable cost. It's 
operating leverage. I think I learned about that in the 70s. Okay, but people in the financial models seem to forget that sometimes. So if I, I, what I can do now is I can, I say, I don't know how much is fixed and variable. How much do you think of a hotel? They've got some fixed costs that don't vary when you have the number of rooms. I, they've got some security. They've got people, I think, at the front desk that they've got to keep people staying overnight. Else. Some costs are a little more variable, like probably electricity and some of the maintenance staff, but I don't know if the occupancy rate is less, what you do, just fire people. I have no idea. There's some, it's, it's not an easy thing to think about, but let's, so let's say the variable cost is, let's, let's be nice to them. Let's say it's only 40%. Okay. Well, no, that's not being nice. That, that means most of the costs are fixed. Well, whatever. Okay. Now, if, of course, if we uh, uh, do that, then let's, I just made that sheet green when you weren't uh, watching. You were watching, but I switched the video off. Okay. So, again, we, now we see which numbers kind of come from the, from the fixed and variable costs. And, and so when we do all of our analysis will put some the operating costs they include the k119 which is including the fixed cost and the variable cost of course we better include any inflation in here and the inflation the cost might be different than the, the revenues and then let's put a cap rate in because the this model again they had some very classically shit thing to do but whatever in the very last year, suddenly it had a terminal value, and this terminal value came from a fixed number. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, they got that. I think it was. It, it looks to be about ten times the uh, the. Is that the? This is the gross revenues. Whatever, but yeah, I think in real estate, what you use is cap rates, and I should have uh, talked to you a lot about cap rates. They're just the cost of capital adjusted for growth. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. Whatever, and then the the uh, so we can put assumptions. We can put all these assumptions in. Now the final thing to look at is really which statistic you have. So once you go through the financing and the profit and loss. I put some switches here. You notice the ones and zeros. I hope they're working okay. False. I like that. I think that's okay. If I would put a zero here, it wouldn't quite work. And then uh, I'm just about finished. Oh, shoot. There's some noise in the background. That's okay. You don't mind that. I'm just about finished. Then we can put, we can create some ratios ourselves. We can compute a project life coverage, the present value of all the cash flows at the, 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 the uh, uh, interest rate. And, but we might want to include the, the, the terminal value or might not include the terminal value. The loan life coverage is the present value of the cash flows divided by the, the loan. They can't afford this, especially in this case. Now let's put the base case, which is what the company started with. Remember the minimum uh, uh, DSCR and the LLCR. It didn't even work in that in that base case that they had. Okay, because they had a DSCR below zero, so you can kind of see that. But over the lifetime, that's that's not nearly as big a problem. Which ratio should you really uh, uh, look at now? Uh, and, uh, I had a, a, a minus CFADS in the first case because the, I, I made a little mistake. Oh shit! I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna revise that. So let's put our economic analysis in. Oh, this is horrible. Now it depends on what, what we have a starting point. If we have a starting point uh, a difference, it gets even lower. Okay. Now you can really do your analysis. This is the whole point. I might fix a couple of things in the sheet. And if we have a lower demand increase, we can see what's going to happen to our, 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 our value. And we could even down here, I think what I should have uh, done is, is shown what the, the project IRR is. The IRR and the equity IRR. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this. Uh, well, here, it, is, is it, it better be in the financial model here somewhere. Okay, let's go and find it quickly. Let's put with the terminal value and then let's, uh, maybe we'll do it like this. Okay, ah, screw this. Okay, with TV, without W, TV. Is that how you would do that? Okay, and uh, excuse me for taking a little bit of your time, but I'm sure nobody's watching the video at this point anyway, so I don't really care. And then uh, uh, let's put the equity cash flow, the equity IRR here, and it's a kind of miserable equity IRR. I wanted to do it without the terminal value. Now, if we if we have a start with a different um, assumption, if we if we say, oh no, this was a luxury hotel, the the, the it's much higher the 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 The, excuse me, and the 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 uh, occupancy is much higher. I can't get any words out because I'm being rudely interrupted. Not really. Uh, uh, the the and then we put our different supply things in, and you can now you're suddenly more like oh it comes alive. This is really what I wanted to show you. Okay, and I think uh, that's enough of this video. Okay. I'll uh, finish this.